so this is our temporary goat shelter. We have these two stalls that Kiara's mucking out right now. Um, this is a bigger stall that we had babies in, and this is um, a smaller stall. It's pretty big, made out of pallets, super easy. Right now it has a tarp on the top being held by um, these bungee cord things and tied to the side. Um, our plan is to one day put a roof on it, but we actually, we'd like to move it. So this is just supposed to be temporary, but it's been, <laughs> it's been here for two years. Um, so we're planning on moving it over there for the winter where we're trying to start another garden. Um, so we were thinking of putting the goats in there and we do the, um, the, like the lasagna compost method for the, the goats in the winter. So we keep piling on hay, piling on hay, piling on hay. Um, we clean it out once in the middle of the winter and then we start over again piling on hay. And the idea of putting it over there where we're starting a garden is that we can just easily take it apart at the end of the season and leave it there for the chickens to scratch into the garden. And then you already have this beautiful compost that was made all winter from the goats. And by the time you're ready to plant in it, our season is late, um, everything is fine and ready. Okay, Sienna, she's she's pushing my, my butt as I try to... Hi, Sienna. Sienna is our bunny goat. She has such a personality. Yes. She's not being mean right now. She just wants me to pet her and play. And here's Agnes, our other mama. So we have Sienna. And Sienna had this beautiful baby, Noelle, that's coming towards me right now. Hi, Noelle. And Agnes, who's pooping right now, <laughs> she had this little baby who has like a light blue color. She is named Stella Lina. So hi, Stella Lina. Hi, Stella Lina. And Stella Lina, if you don't know, means little star. And she was born, um, and we just felt like she was the little star because she was only there was only one goat born. Agnes is our little runt, kind of a runt of a goat, so she'll only be able to really bear one baby. Um, and I'm not sure we'll um, get her pregnant again. Um, she might just be our pet goat. And Sienna is our champion goat. <laughs> She's a beautiful goat. She's had three sets of babies now. Both times, all three times have been twins. Um, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. She, she's had two, two sets of babies, not three sets of babies. She's had two sets of babies, and both times were twins. Two boys were first. We sold the boys. And um, then she had a girl and a boy on this round. We sold the, the boy, the male, um, the male goat, the male kid. And we kept little, we kept little Noelle. And here you go. I love having the goats. Um, our purpose of having them, one is they really have helped improve our soil. Um, we give, we compost all their stuff to the chickens. Um, and they scratch it all in and then we take the soil that is nice and rich. And it's been really making our garden really grow. I mean, this year I've had the best broccoli I've ever had. We're still working out some things here and there with the goats. We're planning on right today, um, kind of closing off this area, maybe reseeding some spots from the winter um, and moving them over there a little bit where it's a little bit more weedy and they can get some of the leaves off the trees because goats really like to be in the woods and they like trees, but we don't like to put our goats in the woods because we have so much poison ivy and goats, they love poison ivy. So our first year with goats, we were like, yes, they're gonna eat all the poison ivy up. But the only issue is with that, is that they get it on their nice fur, the oil, and then we get it on us. So our first year with goats, after we got poison ivy the first summer, we were like, no more. So um, the pigs this, this winter, we put them in where some poison ivy was and they rooted up the poison ivy on some of the trees, which is wonderful. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have a tree over here that, that has fallen and it's got poison ivy. So this winter, the, the pigs are going to go around that whole tree there. And we're hoping that 
they'll root out the poison ivy and then we can use it to put the goats around there next year, but we'll see. Um, we try to use all the animals to do all kinds of things, right? They're very helpful to lots of things on the homestead. And then the goats, these guys are milking goats. So Sienna is our milker, but um, we've been using the milk right now to fatten up our pig. We haven't been using it for ourselves, unfortunately, not yet. Um, the cost of feed has been high and um, getting peas to add to the protein for the pigs has been rough. So we give them some excess eggs and the goat milk right now. And then we'll have, I heard that goat milk really makes a pig taste even yummier. So we're excited about tasting our pig, but not, all, not really excited about butchering um, and not having him anymore because he's one of the family too. But everything has a circle of life and we treat them as best as we can. We love them as best as we can. And then we eat them as best as we can. <laughs> not our goat stuff. Okay, Sienna. Here's Kara moving the goat fence. <clears throat> She's locked up Sienna and Agnes, but she lets the babies out because they stay close to where their mamas are. So the babies are out eating. So we just finished moving the fence and let the goats out into a little bit of taller grass. Our grass isn't growing really tall because of no rain. Um, but this is what they have so far, which is great. They love the weeds. So all the weeds that are growing up, they'll eat down. And they're happy. Happy goats. Happy goats. So we were gonna move them over there where the, there's some weeds and stuff, but we'll just figured right now, let's give them this and then we're gonna move them out that way towards the trees. We, uh, one of the reasons why we didn't is because we have a duck sitting on eggs and we didn't want to move her house yet. We usually move their houses um, frequently because ducks get yucky. But she's sitting on eggs so she's kind of making it a little hard for us to move so we're just waiting to see if she'll have some eggs. She kicked out two eggs, so I'm assuming they're not fertile. And she's sitting on eight more. Noelle, what are you eating? So goats are browsers. People think they tend to, you know, they'll mow the grass for you, but they don't, they, they're browsers. The male goats we had, they tend, we had four. When we move them in a spot, the grass would be down in like seconds. Maybe because we had eight goats all together in here. But usually they just kind of browse looking for things they really like. But if you leave them long enough, I guess they will eat everything. So right now it's drying. We will put um, some mixture of diatomaceous earth, essential oils, and baking soda inside their stalls in a little bit. But we're letting the sun air it out, dry it out. Then we will put that down on top of hay. Um, Diatomaceous earth helps to kill any mites, um, keep away, you know, worms and different things that would bother the goats as well. So, fly larva, all that stuff. The Muscovy ducks and the chicken will, will get so the goats can be a little more free from flies. There's still, it's not a guarantee that all your flies will be gone off a goat, but much much of them you have a lot a lot less our first year with goats the first summer we didn't have any muscovies or um, chickens in here and I felt so bad we kept spraying them and spraying them with these different essential oils every day and it helped but then once that wears off the flies are just back again so um, they I, they have minimal flies this year which is wonderful um, from the from the muscovy ducks being in here and the chick and then we we carry down some chickens usually after we clean out the stalls for cleaning extra cleaning but now that we have that one chicken here I think I think it's fine with the duck 
think they'll be, the stalls will be great. Here's where we put our goat hay, poop. Um, and here you see the chickens loving it. So this is, these are our, I call them the compost chickens. We put our compost here, we put our grass clippings, we put everything here. Um, this year we haven't had a lot of grass clippings, so <laughs> we've been just using the hay and the goat poop. But um, here's the chickens scratching, scratching, scratching. They compost everything for us, shred it up real small, as you can see. Um, I use my foot to show you. It's, they, this was hay. This was hay, and now it's um, more manageable, as you can see. Chicken thinks he's gonna find. Uh, so I just um, rake some of this up off of the, they had scratched it all past there. I just moved the fence back a little bit and um, raked it back so I can move the fence back because they're kind of stretching the compost area. I don't want it to go that far, but but um, sometimes the kids just, they wheelbarrow it in and throw it at the edge. They kind of like it to be wheelbarrowed in and thrown here. So um, all the compost can kind of stay in this fenced area. I mean, I'm, I'm planning on having this whole area be a big compost heap. Um, so this is what we do with our chickens. And then this compost goes into our garden next spring and it feeds the garden. And some of it goes in um, now for, for fall gardening, but honestly, I decided not to do fall gardening. We just have so much happening and we have so much that is growing that we planted a little late that is growing that I think we'll have plenty for the fall. Um, we might just plant some lettuce. Um, but here, and then composting is supposed to be really easy, but it's hard on a family. So I find this the easiest way to compost, throwing everything in one area and using the chickens. And then they really, they have made our garden like mega grow. Um, so our garden is, is doing really, really great. And then in the fall, in a few weeks when we harvest some of the rest, some parts of our garden, we'll, we'll, we'll block off some areas and let the chickens in to clean up. And the nice thing about this composting is not only are they shredding into real tiny like dirt there, um, so all that hay will look like this. This is, this is the hay that they had for the winter, and this is the hay I just gave them. So in a few days, that, that'll even be shredded up nicely, really thin. You don't gotta put it through a chipper or anything. The chickens do it for you, and they get food. But the nice thing about this way, too, is that they eat a lot of the bugs that would destroy your garden. So I feel like we have like a, a heads up on um, like a, what would you call it? Like a, I don't know, <laughs> we're a little bit ahead of the bugs. Um, you're still gonna get bugs, but I find this is a great head start with using their compost. Then you don't have as many bugs in your garden. Um, yeah, so there they are at work. Life and some slime. Life and some slime.